Yeah, yeah we'll uh, we'll start from that bit where it uh, talks about Arjuna's doubts. I'll just review that. Yeah, if you go back, go back one. Now go back another. Mm. No, go forward now. Go forward. Let me see. Yeah, forward. Okay. Okay. So okay now. Okay now. I'm familiar. I remember. All right. Uh, so go back. No other way. Yeah. Yeah. You can go back one more. All right. We're talking about violence. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just begin by offering some prayers. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Khoravani Precharine Nirvise Shashunyavadi Paschatya De Shatarine Vanchakaupa Terubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our second session here on Bhagavad Gita. Now yesterday we were speaking, are we okay translation? Is it going on? Yes, Maharaj. Just a second. Do, do I have to do anything here? Okay. I think I should put it Nepali English. Yes, Arjuna Mata, you will be on Thai and Antaranga Prabhu on Nepali. Okay. So I, I don't I can just talk and you will translate as I'm talking, is it? Or do I have to say a sentence and wait for you to translate? Me? Uh, yes, Gurev, it's better, it's easier when you stop and then I translate. If we do simultaneously, then I miss out some Okay. And uh, what about Antaranga? Yes, Maharaj, you will be translating in a separate room after you speak uh, simultaneously with the Thai. Okay. All right. So I understand now. Thank you. So yesterday... Oh, sorry. It's coming out, huh, Maharaj? Yeah, I'm hearing that, yeah. Me, I'm so... Yeah, I'm hearing. Oh, okay. So we wait for Niam to sort it out, Maharaj. So what should we do? You, can you sort it out, Niam? Yes, Now, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> so, yes, Maharaj, we can start. Okay. Are you Sunia, sir? Now, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> we have to work this out. 
Maybe you need to get a headphone. Here's my, I have a headphone. Oh, you're using a headphone, huh? Yeah, okay. Okay. No, no, maybe. Maybe I should. Now? Let me put off the Nepali. Okay, say something now, Antaranga. Okay, I can't hear you now. Okay. Maaz, I think uh, we can't hear him technically. He is on another room, but he can hear you. He can hear me. Okay, very good. So that's how it should be. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So we were speaking about Arjuna coming to the battlefield and he had different doubts. And one of the doubts was about sinful reactions. So, using violence is something which people are, you know, they feel strongly about, they feel that violence is not good, you should never use violence. But we learn from the Bhagavad Gita that sometimes violence is necessary in order to bring about peace and in order to instill uh, justice. For example, somebody who is a murderer, then they should be killed. This is stated in the scripture called Manu Samhita, that when a person is a murderer, the justice is that he should be killed. <coughs> so there is proper use of justice. There are proper there are situations where justice where violence is often necessary. And in this particular case of the Kurukshetra war, it was a battle which was arranged between Kshatriyas, military people. The military people were fighting other military people. And so it was a it was a an, a, a proper battle. It was not unfair. It was not like nowadays when they have war, they fly aeroplanes over and drop bombs on innocent people. So this battle of Kurukshetra was arranged that Kshatriyas all gathered together and they had come to, with the intention of laying down their life and then uh, as uh, it was part of their duty as Kshatriyas and it, it was considered glorious to actually fight and to give up their life on the battlefield. So Arjuna was encouraged to do his duty, and by doing his duty, he wouldn't get any reactions. 
ออริจินัลเนี่ยส่งถูกส่งเสริมนะคะให้ปฏิบัติตามหน้าที่ของเขาแล้วท่านก็บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเขาเนี่ยทำตามหน้าที่เนี่ยเขาจะไม่ได้รับผลกระทบอะไร Okay go ahead a r c h e r next slide Okay now a little different subject here we're talking about how the the Vedas describe the soul and the super soul That within the body, there's not one soul, but there are two souls. One is called the individual soul, and the other is called the super soul. And these two souls are like two birds sitting on a tree. ในพระเวทนะคะได้อธิบายเกี่ยวกับองค์อภิวิญญาณแล้วก็วิดวงวิญญาณอย่างเราใช่ไหมคะว่าในร่างของเราเนี่ยจะมีสองดวงวิญญาณด้วยกันหนึ่งก็คือองค์อภิวิญญาณสองก็คือวิญญาณอันนี้เนี่ยได้ให้คำเปรียบเทียบไว้เหมือนกับนกสองตัวบนต้นไม้ So the one bird is eating the fruit and the other bird the super soul is the witness he's watching to see what we're going to do ก็คือนกหนึ่งตัวเนี่ยเขาจะพยายามสนองความสุขบนต้นไม้โดยการกินผลไม้ที่อยู่บนต้นไม้นั้นแต่ว่านกอีกตัวหนึ่งเนี่ยคือเขาจะไม่ได้ทำอะไรเขาจะดูเฉยๆเพื่อเป็นพยาน So we say that the the bird instead of eating the fruit he has to look towards the other bird because the other bird is his eternal friend the super soul who is a form of Krishna in the heart And when we look towards Krishna, then we get free from all the reactions of work. เราชนะนะคะนกอีกตัวหนึ่งเนี่ยคือเป็นพยานเฉยๆต่อกิจกรรมที่นกอีกตัวหนึ่งเนี่ยพยายามทำใช่ไหมคะเหมือนกันในใจของเราใช่ก็มีองค์อภิวิญญาณอยู่นะคะเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยที่เราเนี่ยหยุดทํากิจกรรมก็คือหยุดหาความสุขทางโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยเราก็หันหน้าหาพระองค์ใช่ไหมคะอันนั้นเนี่ยจะเป็นวันที่เราเนี่ยจะเป็นอิสระจากผลแห่งการกระทําของเรา Go ahead next slide I'll go ahead click it again right okay now karma kanda we're describing about karma kanda karma kanda the path karma kanda means the path of karma or the path of material enjoyment ต่อมานะคะก็จะอธิบายในส่วนของคารมาคันดะค่ะคารมาคันดะเนี่ยหมายถึงกิจกรรมทางวัตถุ So we say it's mentioned here swadharmam swadharmam Sanskrit meaning performing our duty doing your dharma your prescribed duty so Arjuna's duty is the shatriya and the shatriya's duty is to fight when he's challenged to battle he has to fight นะที่นี้นะคะก็ให้คําว่าสวัสดีมังไว้ซึ่งอันนี้เนี่ยหมายความว่าให้ปฏิบัติตามหน้าที่ที่ได้กําหนดไว้หาการปฏิบัติหน้าที่เนี่ยอย่างเช่นในตอนนี้เนี่ยสำหรับออร์จูนาเนี่ยเขาเป็นกษัตริย์สิ่งที่เขาควรที่จะปฏิบัติปฏิบัติเนี่ยก็คือการต่อสู้นั่นเอง And then it's mentioned what should be his mood in fighting that he should simply fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress Loss or gain, victory or defeat, and in this way he will never get any sinful reactions. เอาการต่อสู้เนี่ยควรที่จะทําอย่างไรนะคะก็ได้อธิบายไปว่าเขาเนี่ยควรที่จะต่อสู้เพราะนั้นแล้วพอถือว่านั้นเนี่ยเป็นหน้าที่ของเขาโดยไม่มีความหวังในความสุขหรือว่าความทุกข์ในการสูญเสียหรือว่าการได้รับในชัยชนะหรือว่าการแพ้เพื่อที่จะถ้าเกิดเขาทําเช่นนี้เนี่ยเขาจะไม่ต้องได้รับผลกรรมอะไรไม่ต้องไม่ได้รับผลบาป So Krishna describes this in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita that if Arjuna fights as Karma Kanda for the for then he it will help him to go to heaven he can go to the higher planets และอันนี้นะคะได้อธิบายไว้ว่าในส่วนของคารมาคันดาเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าอาจุนนเนี่ยต่อสู้แล้วเขาตายเนี่ย People have these desires, material desires. We want, a, a, we want to have a better position. We want to go to higher planets. We want longer life, more opulence. So this is the results of karma kanda. 
Karmakanda means following the teachings of the Vedas for material results. Of course, this is material, this is not spiritual. Go ahead, next slide. Okay, here's the, the yoga ladder. The first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita are describing this yoga ladder. Right, you see, Lord Krishna in the first six chapters has been describing these different levels of yoga, one after another. You can see at the bottom of the ladder, below number one, below number one we've got animal life, animal existence. Most people are on that level of animal existence. They don't do yoga, they don't engage in any spiritual practice, they only do animal activities, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Then a, a little better than animal existence on the level of number one on the yoga ladder is karmakanda. And we describe karmakanda, it's using the Vedas for sense gratification. Krishna is telling Arjuna, fight, fight, it will open the doors to the heavenly planets. Even if you're killed in the battle, you will go to heaven. You will enjoy heaven. Then number two, the second level, we've got Sankhya Karma Yoga. Sankhya Karma Yoga means you understand there's a, a goal in life, but you're attached to the fruit. You still want to enjoy the fruit of your work. Some people are very attached to their work. They're not able to give up the work. And they, and, and they want to enjoy the fruit of their work also. But at the same time, they, they understand there is some goal in life beyond the material. But they're very attached. They don't really know about. Number three is Niskam Karma Yoga, meaning detached work. Niskam Karma Yoga, 
They're, they're still working. They like their work. They don't want to give up their work. But they give up the fruit of their work. So that's, a, that's a quite an advanced level of yoga. Because most people are very attached to the result of their work. They like to enjoy the fruit. And then above Niskam Karma Yoga, you have Jnana Yoga, which is the yoga of knowledge. Yeah, the people become more philosophical and they want to understand the nature of the Absolute Truth. So, so these are all described in chapters 2, 3, 4 and 5. And then you come to chapter, in chapter 6, we come to level number 5 on this yoga ladder, which is called Astanga Yoga. Astanga meaning the 8 steps of yoga. So this is described in the sixth, sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes what you need to do to practice this kind of yoga. But Astanga Yoga, part of it is doing some asana, and then part of it is pranayama, controlling the breath. And then the rest of it, the other half, five, six, seven, and eight steps are all meditation. So, the, the goal, that goal of Astanga Yoga, when it's perfected, it will bring you to level number six, Bhakti Yoga. So Krishna, Lord Krishna describes in the sixth chapter, at the end of the sixth chapter, he describes that of all yogis, the highest yogi is the one who is a bhakti yogi. And bhakti yoga is also sometimes called buddhi yoga. Buddhi means intelligence, the yoga of intelligence. And, yo and the, word, the word yoga means to connect or to link. And so connecting our soul with the Supreme Soul or our consciousness with the Supreme Consciousness. So you can, in this, uh, in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it's described that Bhakti Yoga is the top of the yoga ladder and it's the culmination of all yogas to come to the level of bhakti. 
ในบทที่บทนี้ในบทที่6นะคะก็จะอธิบายเกี่ยวกับการเจริญนะคะของบุคคลที่อยู่ในอของโยกีนะคะที่ในที่สุดเนี่ยโยคะสูงสุดที่เขาจะมาถึงเนี่ยคือบัคติยุโยกะ Some we when we say bhakti we speak about devotion the one who has bhakti he is a devotee he has devotion not just simply devotion but devotional service devotional activity means activities which are done for the pleasure of this of the supreme ในบัคติโยกะนะคะก็คือไม่ใช่แค่ว่าเป็นการเจริญนะคะการอุทิศตนเสียสละที่ทำไปให้กับพระเจ้าด้วยใจรักอันนั้นเนี่ยจะเรียกว่าบัคติ So in practice of yoga you can you can see you can go from level one you could start off maybe you come become from animal life and we come to karma kanda and then karma kanda then we come up to the next step karma yoga and then up to from karma yoga come to jnana yoga astanga yoga and then it, it come up to bhakti yoga so then That's like going up the stairs. It takes a long time. ก็ตอนแรกเลยเนี่ยเริ่มต้นจากการที่เราใช้ชีวิตแบบสัตว์ก่อนนะคะก็คือไม่ได้ค้นหาสัจธรรมอะไรมากก็ใช้ชีวิตอยู่เกินไปเรื่อยๆแต่พอเริ่มมีปัญญาเนี่ยก็จะเริ่มมาที่คารมคันดะแล้วนะคะพอก็คือเริ่มทำทำเกี่ยวกับประเวทไปแต่เพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัสหลังจากนั้นก็เริ่มดีขึ้นมาอีกนะคะมาถึงระดับต่อไป So if someone lives on the sixth floor, we don't usually walk up the stairs. We like to go in the elevator. So similarly, in the practice of yoga. We find it better to go immediately to bhakti yoga and not to just begin and go to one and then two and then three. But we find it easier just to go immediately to take up bhakti yoga. And if one does bhakti yoga properly. Then the qualities of the bhakti yoga also include the other yogas. So one who is a bhakti yogi, he's also an astanga yogi, he's also a jnani yogi, he's also a karma yogi. สำหรับบุคคลที่อยู่ในบัคติโยกีเป็นบุคคลเป็นผู้ปฏิบัติในบัคติโยกีใช่ไหมคะเขาเนี่ยจะถือว่าเป็นผู้ที่มีอสังกโยกีด้วยเป็นญาณโยกีด้วยเป็นทุกอย่างคัพคาร์มายอกา remember คาร์มายอกา means working doing our duty with detachment ตามคาร์มายอกาได้ไหมคะคาร์มายอกาเนี่ยหมายความว่าทำงานไปโดยไม่ยึดติดกับผลของงาน So bhakti yogi should also work with detachment. เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วบัคติโยกีเนี่ยก็คือก็เป็นบุคคลที่ควรที่จะทำงานโดยไม่หวังผลเช่นกัน And a bhakti yogi, he's also a jnana yogi. He also has knowledge about the absolute truth. บัคติโยกีเนี่ยก็เป็นญาณโยกีเช่นกันค่ะญาณโยกีก็คือผู้ที่มีความรู้And a bhakti yogi is also an astanga yogi because he's always meditating. He always remembers Krishna. So if we were to go from one step to the other, it can take a long time, and you may never get to level number six. But if we take up bhakti yoga, 
then we will naturally develop the qualities of the, all the other yogas. And we see in the Bhagavad Gita, the main heart of the Bhagavad Gita is about Bhakti Yoga. The first six chapters are describing the Yoga Ladder. But then chapter 7 begins to describe Bhakti Yoga. So this, the, the middle portion of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7 to chapter 12, are all discussing the importance of Bhakti Yoga. Go ahead, next slide. Okay, so this is a verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text number 46, is it? 46, yes. Right? Right. Chapter four, uh, verse number 46, second chapter. Krishna is, the, Lord Krishna is describing to Arjuna that, the, that he, he gives an example, he's giving an example. He's just like if there's a, a big reservoir, a big reservoir of water, a big river or a big lake, then it can, it can do all the functions of all of these little wells which are here. You can see here in the, in the illustration, different wells are here. Just like in a village, one well may be for drinking water, and another well may be for washing clothes, another well may be for washing the body, and another well, the water is for cooking. And like that, you have different wells, different types of water. But if you have a big reservoir, a big lake, or a big river, then all the things can be done there, in the river. ก็แต่ละที่เนี่ยก็จะมีแต่ละบ่อน้ําในแต่ละบ่อน้ําเนี่ยก็จะบอกว่าบ่อน้ํานี้เป็นน้ําสําหรับใช้ดื่มน้
all the purposes, all the functions can be done there in the river. Go ahead, next slide. All right, then Arjuna asks a question. He wants to know about this person who is called Stita Pragnashya. It means one who is fixed in transcendental consciousness. So, right. So Arjuna, he says, how will we speak? How will he walk? Right. We want to understand how to recognize a person who is in transcendental consciousness. Go ahead. So here's some of the symptoms, the stita pragna symptoms, the symptoms of one who's in transcendental consciousness. First of all, he's very strong in his determination to control his senses. So this is described in the verse number 58 of the second chapter. Controlling the senses. Of all the senses, the tongue is the most difficult to control. The tongue is always wanting to speak or say things. It always wants to eat and taste things. So you can see in the picture we've given an example, the, the, the snake charmer, the man is playing his pipe, his flute, and in this way he's able to control the, the cobras, poison snakes, that they're, co they're coming and they're dancing, they're controlled by him. So our, our senses are like these poison snakes. They can give us a lot of trouble. We have to keep the senses under control. We want to be the master of the senses. So just like the man, the snake charmer, he's controlling the snakes, we can also control the senses by mantra, meditation. When we are chanting, the Maha Mantra, the Hare Krishna Mantra has a very powerful effect to help us control the mind and senses. Go ahead. All right. 
the danger of even only one uncontrolled senses. Right? Verse number, second chapter, verse 67. A boat swept away by a strong wind. So any one of the senses on which the mind dwells can carry away a man, can carry away a man even of intelligence. So, how to avoid, how to control the senses mentioned here must always be wakeful and alert. So controlling the senses is a, the very important part of yoga practice. The senses, we said, the tongue, very difficult to control. But sometimes it's other senses. We have five senses and they're all trying to enjoy. We have to control the senses. Higher than the senses is the mind. So we have to keep the mind always very controlled and in this way, keep the senses also under control. And higher than the mind is intelligence. Then we should use our intelligence to control the mind and then the mind will control the senses. So in Sanskrit, they have the word Goswami. Goswami means one who is the master of the senses. But most people are not Goswami, most people are Godas. They are the servant of the senses. And the senses take us into, cause us to do sinful activities. And the sinful activities cause us to take another birth in the material world. So yogi is very careful to keep the mind and the senses controlled. Go ahead. Okay. Verse number 69 of the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. Your day is my night. You can see here in the picture that the one man, they're laying sleeping in the morning. It's quite early in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. So they're laying sleeping peacefully. And over here, on the other side, we see the same, at the same time, these people are going to the temple and they're singing and dancing in the early morning. 
เวลากลางคืนนะคะสำหรับพวกมันมีผู้ชายคนหนึ่งนะคะตีสี่ครึ่งเวลานี้นะคะเห็นนาฬิกาอยู่คนหนึ่งเนี่ยผู้ชายคนหนึ่งคือเขานอนอยู่บนเตียงแต่ว่าอีกกลุ่มหนึ่งเนี่ยเขาไปวัดกันนะคะไปทำอารติตอนเช้ากัน So the activities of the introspective sage, the devotee, the thoughtful man, are night for persons who are materially absorbed. Yeah, hit again. Yes, but the same materialistic people. They're asleep in the early morning when the devotees are awake, and when these people are awake, these people sleep. <laughs> hmm. So they have a very different lifestyle. The lifestyle between the materialistic people. And the people who practice spiritual life. Go ahead. All right. And though this is a nice verse from chapter two, text number seventy. So Krishna is giving another example. He says, just like rivers flow into the ocean, so even though so much water is coming from the river, but the ocean still remains the same. It remains always still. แม่น้ำเนี่ยจะไหลไปสู่มหาสมุทรก็ตามนะคะแต่เขาเนี่ยก็ยังคงความนิ่งสงบอยู่เสมอ So the same way person has many desires they may be coming in the mind so many desires but he remains peaceful he doesn't become worried about all these thoughts coming in the mind เหมือนการกับบุคคลนะเราอาจจะมีความคิดมากมายนะที่เข้ามารบกวนจิตใจของเราแต่สำหรับบุคคลที่เป็นที่เป็นโยกีเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยจะไม่ได้ไม่ได้ถูกแนวความคิดนี้เนี่ยรบกวนจิตใจเขา So many desires coming in the mind just tolerate they will go away เออมีความต้องการหลายอย่างมากที่อาจจะเข้ามาในจิตใจเขาแต่ว่าสิ่งที่เขาทำก็คือแค่ทนไปค่ะเดี๋ยวสิ่งเหล่านี้มันก็จะไป So this is the example given in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna wants Arjuna That he should do his duty. He should do what he's supposed to do, and don't get, don't become mental and become confused. So this is how to deal with the mind. We have to just neglect all the desires coming in the mind. But he sh Arjuna should use his intelligence. That's important. You should know what's the right thing to do. Don't keep a lot of material desires and don't be lazy. Understand our position as the spirit soul, and our understand our relationship with the supreme soul. Okay, are there any questions? Just like we say, is Arjuna understanding? 
So we ask, we ask all of you, are you understanding this Bhagavad Gita? Okay, so my, uh, Prabhu's question is, uh, we, are, we have been hearing that we are not the body, we are the souls, but why don't we realize it practically? Problem is, you, we're very conditioned to the material life. We're very attached to the material body. And it takes some time to get rid of the wrong thinking which we have. Just like sometimes people get hit on the head and they lose their memory. So, we're conditioned souls and we're like that. We're all spirit souls, but we've forgotten it and we've, instead we are identifying with the material body. So how do we get back our material memories? We have, we have to hear. We have to hear again and again and again. We have to be reminded. It takes some time. I have to understand we have been in the material world a very, very long time. So it takes time for us to get back our true consciousness. Just like when you get hit in the head, you lose your memory, you have to, has to everybody have to, has to be introduced to you again. They have to tell you, oh, this man, this is your husband. And you think, oh no. <laughs> and then you have to be taken home and they have to teach this is your home and this is a, your kitchen and this is your bedroom and gradually, gradually you start to remember. So in the same way, we have to go to the temple, we have to see the deity, we have to understand there's Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord, we're his servant. And we have we have to hear, we have to hear again and again, we have to be reminded because we keep forgetting. Uh 
But conditioned souls can also become liberated souls. It just takes some time, just takes some practice. You have to practice the spiritual principles. Right, we've been conditioned, we've been in the material world a very long time, but we can also be liberated, we can become a pure liberated soul. It just requires purification, and that purification comes about by practice of bhakti yoga. You have to hear, you have to hear the books like Bhagavad Gita, and we have to chant the mantras, and we have to see the deity. We have to know what is the proper behavior, what is the proper standard of behavior for somebody, for a pure soul. What things should we do and what things should we not do? Some people think, oh, it doesn't matter, you can eat anything, it doesn't make any difference. That's not true. It does, it makes a big difference. So, we have to purify the mind and the senses by the proper behavior. But we're very ignorant, we're very attached, and we're, we're the servant of our senses. And because we're the servant of the senses, we do many sinful things, and that causes us to become more and more ignorant. And ignorance means you have to make, take an animal body in the next life. Yes, understand Prabhu? You can understand why we're so conditioned, why it's so difficult for us? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes, Guru Maharaj. Now we understand. Any other question there? Yes, Guru Dev, from Shaya Madhuji. Oh, yes. Pishaya, ha? Dainin, my ha? Who is the host? Unmute my. Oh, I think host have to allow her. Uh, she can unmute herself. Who's the host? Niyam. Such. The host, na. Niyam, such is Yes. Is he there? Nimai Sachi Sutta, you should unmute Chaya. Who 
Where is he? Where is Nimai? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavarpana. Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Chaya. Achana Pahena Nakha. Nimi Khos Sosai, Nai Kita Bod Song Tu Song Nakha. Kyoka Khong. Nimi Sosai, Nai Kwan Tehtang, Rawang Brahman Ka Paramatama Nakha. Wa Tehtang Kan Yengai. Nako Ya Hai Mahara Ati Bai Tung. Her question is from Bhagavad Gita 2.2. She wants to understand uh, what is the difference between uh, soul, uh, Brahman, and Paramatma. Sorry, Brahman, Brahman, and Paramatma. What's the difference between Brahman and Paramatma? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So Paramatma is the expansion of the Lord in the heart of all living entities. We were explaining tonight about two birds in the tree, like two souls in the body. So the, the Paramatma is the super soul, and from the super soul comes knowledge, remembrance, or forgetfulness. And the super soul is also described in Bhagavad Gita as being the overseer and the permitter. He's, in other words, he's watching everything we do. And it reminds us about all of our desires. We may forget, but the super soul remembers. So the super soul is there accompanying the soul within the body. Within the material world, the super soul is there to help us to get out of the material world, to go back to the spiritual world. So, so the super soul is in the material world, not in the spiritual world. So the super soul is there to help us, to get out, to go back to Krishna. And Brahman is the impersonal energy of Krishna. And the Brahman, the, the impersonal Brahmajyoti is the effulgence which comes from Krishna's body. So the Brahman is the energy of Krishna. Just an, it's a, it's an, like the active principle of everything. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes, I am the taste in water, or I am the sound in ether. Or I am the light of the sun and the moon. These are this is all descriptions of Brahman. Brahman, ha, ko prep samuan kap kam prep perm. Yang chen, Krishna ne bok ne pagod kita ne wakha ne pen sing ni pen sing na ha. Nai laksana deo kan pro ko song bok theng kwan pen Brahman kong pro. Now we are also Brahman. We are tiny parts, sparks of the Brahman. Right? There's two souls. One is the Jiva soul 
are the individual soul and the other is the super soul or paramatma. So we are the individual soul, the jiva soul, and the jiva soul is Brahman. So the Brahman is, the nature of Brahman is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. And Brahman is always joyful, always situ situated in transcendental bliss. So we should always be transcendentally blissful. We should always be happy because we are Brahman. One who knows he's not the body, who understands he's a soul, then he is prasanatma, he's a joyful soul. But we're not the supreme soul. We are the tiny spark from the fire. Krishna is the fire. We are tiny spark from the fire. So we, we have the same qualities, different in quantity. Like a drop of water in the ocean. The same qualities, but different quantity. So Krishna is the Supreme Brahman, and we are the tiny part, spark of the Brahman. Is it clear, Chaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Do we have any more questions? We have one more, Gurudev. Yeah. From Sarapune Mamaji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. It's a question from my mother, Okay. okay, her her question is uh, Krishna Krishna in the form of Paramatma, he is helping every helping every devotee to go back to Krishna. Why is he not helping non devotee? Well he also there in non devotee and uh, is he not helping them? Yes. He's helping them. But according to their desire. You see, first they have to satisfy, first they have to meet their material desires. They don't want to go back to Godhead. So Krishna doesn't force them to go back to Godhead. <laughs> So first of all, they have to 
satisfy their material desires. And when they suffer because of all their material desires, then they will begin to think more about what is the goal of life and what is the alternative. So Krishna gives everyone some independence. They can choose between surrender to Krishna and surrender to Maya. So when they surrender to Krishna, then Krishna helps them to go back to Godhead. And when they surrender to Maya, then Krishna helps them to understand the nature of material world. Right? The nature of the material world is all misery, all suffering. But foolish people are thinking, I will enjoy, I will enjoy, let me enjoy. So then Krishna will say, all right, become a pig and become a dog, become a tree and they have to go in these different bodies. So they stand in these different bodies suffering and gradually, gradually when they're fortunate they will understand there's some other purpose to life. Of course, they have to come back to the human form of life because it's only in the human form of life that they can understand this. The animals, the plants, the trees, they cannot understand about the purpose of life. They are also souls, but they cannot understand the higher purpose of life. Because the consciousness is so covered by the material body. So after a long time, they may come back to the human form of life and again they're given a chance in the human body. So we have been here in the material world a long time. We have taken many different bodies, we don't remember. But Krishna remembers, Krishna rem he knows everything. He knows the past and he knows the future. So he, when we're fortunate, when we're very fortunate, then we get the mercy of devotees. And they give us spiritual knowledge to awaken us, to understand. We got one more question, Gurudev. Yeah. 
From Madhavi Pavani Mataji. Oh, Madhavi Pavani Mataji is here. Oh, okay. Very good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Nagi Mecha. Pavanki Michelle Ho Lao. Mecha Mi Kondai. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. He is my humble obeisances. อ่าคําถามนะคะก็มิเชลเคยได้ยินว่าเอ่อคนบนโลกสวรรค์กับโลกภพภูมิอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเค้าเอ่อเหมือนอยากจะมาโลกวัต
หมดอายุซะก่อนแล้วเขาถึงจะได้กลับไปหากลับไปหากิชาดาคือซึ่งพระพรมหนึ่งวันของพระพรมเนี่ยก็ยาวมากอย่างที่เราทราบกันอยู่และพระพรมเนี่ยมีอายุหนึ่งร้อยปี But from the earth planet, you don't have to wait for the end of Brahma's life. You can go back to Godhead immediately. This life. This is special benefit of this planet, this place, because this this is the place where Lord Chaitanya came to give the chanting of the holy name. Is it clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj, very clear, very clear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, so we're having this is the second day of the seminar on Bhagavad Gita, and tomorrow night will be the final day. We're going through the. We're giving some introductions to the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, to, tomorrow night will be the third seminar. At the same time uh, as tonight, we'll have again the class tomorrow night. And this is a special, yeah. special for Songkran. Well, usually every day, every week on this day, Wednesday, we have Krishna book, but the, tonight we're we were the, because yesterday and tomorrow we're giving Bhagavad Gita, so we're we're having just Bhagavad Gita this week, but next week we'll, we'll be back with the Krishna book. So you're all invited next week if you like, or tomorrow night also you can join us again for Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so no more questions, right? Uh, question I, I can see. Sham Giri Broji raised his hand. I don't know, it's late for you, Gurudev? No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Sham Giri Broji. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances all glories to La Prabhupada Maharaji. It's not about the class question, just we want to know your uh, health report, the latest, Maharaj, how you feel after your uh, COVID positive? No, 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 this is just, we're just giving class on Bhagavad Gita, we're not giving medical okay, reports right. here. Just we was worried. So no, 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 this is not okay. the time or place. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll finish here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go, go back to Vrindavan Ki. Hare Krishna.